Today we're going to solve systems of equations by graphing. So reading the first star, it says that two or more linear equations together form a system of linear equations. So you can graph different types of equations or functions like your absolute value, quadratic, square root. The key uh, term in that sentence is that when you graph two or more, it becomes a system. And when you're graphing all lines, that would be a linear system. The solution to a system of linear equations is the point of intersection. So it's where the two lines meet, if they meet at all. And every point is written in terms of x and y. So let's take a look at example number one. Example number one says if the lines have different slopes, they will intersect and have one solution. So let's highlight different slopes. Okay, they should have one solution. So slope or rate of change is how steep or looking at the slant of your line. If we take a look at the system, so the system includes y equals 2x minus 3 and y equals x minus 1. y equals 2x minus 3 is graphed if you take a look at that on the right. So we're going to graph y equals x minus 1. So our slope here, again, it's y equals mx plus b. So our slope is 1. And then our b is negative 1. Just taking a look at the slope intercept in this equation, we have a slope of 2 and an intercept of negative 3. So you can see that they do have different slopes. So in green, I'll graph y equals x minus 1. So starting at negative 1 on the y-axis, because that's our y-intercept, and we have a slope of positive 1. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. You can see that they intersect right here. So take your straight edge and connect. I'm just going to sketch it, so I'm going to continue making the dots. Make sure you always label your equations in the system so we know what line or which line is which. Okay, so that point of intersection is our solution. It's the answer. So where do they cross? They cross at 2, 1. To verify or to prove, for me to prove to you that it is indeed, we can see that it's on each line, but say we didn't actually have the picture. So I'm going to prove to you algebraically Okay, or by hand, that it indeed is on both of the lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug it into, I'm going to do this on the side. I'm going to plug it into the y equals 2x minus 3. So the y is 1, does 1 equal 2 times 2 minus 3. Multiplication before subtraction, 4 minus 3 does equal 1, it checks. Now I'm going to plug it into the equation y equals x minus 1. Again, y is 1. Does 1 equal 2 minus 1? It does. So we just checked or proved that it is indeed on each line. So therefore, the point 2, 1 is the solution to the system. In example number 2, it says if the lines have the same slope but different y-intercepts, then the lines are parallel and there's no solution. Well, we've already taken a look at parallel lines in a previous unit and we know that they have the same slope. So if the lines are parallel, meaning they're equidistant from each other, they're not going to intersect. And since the solution, okay, is the point of intersection, there would be no solution. So on the graph to the right is y equals negative 2x minus 1. Just to highlight again, we have a slope of negative 2 and a b value of 1. Down below, we have a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So you can see they have the same slope, but they have a different y-intercept. So let's graph that. Starting at negative 3, slope is negative 2, so we go down 2 over 1, or up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1. So I'm going to sketch that by hand. And you can see they are equidistant. They're not going to intersect. So let me label y equals negative 2x minus 3. And therefore, we have 
no solution because they do not intersect. So this may be a good case because we don't have to check, right? There's no solution, there's no point to check. The last case is if the lines have the same slopes and the same y-intercepts, then the lines are essentially the same, okay? And therefore, they're going to intersect everywhere. And since lines, because of the arrows, extend infinitely, they have an infinite number of solutions. So on the right side um, is the graph okay of y e it actually has both equations but I'm gonna take this equation so it's already graphed for you but we're actually gonna take this equation and solve for y to show that it actually does land upon here's our y-intercept of 2 down 1 over 2 down 1 over 2 to show that it actually will land on this line right here so this is this line and I'm gonna solve 2x plus 4y equals 8 for y, so we would subtract 2x. And we have 4y equals negative 2x plus 8, divided by 4, and y equals negative 1 half x plus 2, which is the same thing as that right line right there. So when you graph it, it lands right over the top of it, and it's essentially, again, where it is, the same line. Okay, so our solution is an infinite uh, number of solutions. On the back side, it says tell whether the system has no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. Remember, it has infinitely many solutions if you have the same line. So let's look at both of these problems to see if we have the same line. In number one, the first one solved for y, so let's solve the second one for y so we can take a look at them both in y equals mx plus b, so y equals x plus 4. That is the same as that line, so we have an infinite number of solutions. Explain how you know, okay? I knew that because the equations were the same. Okay? The second one, now let's look at the case where we have one solution versus no solution. Well, we have no solution when the lines are parallel. If they're not parallel, they will eventually intersect because they have a different slant or different slope. Okay? So let's look at the equations in number two. Here we have a slope of two and a y-intercept of negative three. Here we have a slope of negative one and a b value of 3. So because they have a different slope, okay, we know that they're going to have one solution. Okay? Number 3 and number 4. Tell whether the ordered pair is a solution. Well, if it's a solution, we should be able to plug it in as we did on the front page, and it should work in both equations. So if you plug it in and it doesn't work in one, that's enough to stop. You know it's not going to work, uh, or it may work on the other, but it, it has to work for both. Okay? So I'm going to plug 6 in for x and negative 2 in for y. So I'm going to do this one first. So it'll be 2 times 6 minus a negative 2, I should get 14. Well, multiplication first, 2 times 6 is 12, subtracting a negative becomes positive, and 2 plus 12 is 14. So it works for that one. Now to check this one. 
x plus 4y, so 6 plus 4 times negative 2, does that equal negative 2? So multiplication first is 6 minus 8, or plus a negative is the same as subtraction. Is that negative 2? It is. So tell whether the ordered pair is a solution, and there's our work. The answer is yes. It is a solution. Number four, the point is four zero, so I'm going to plug four in for x and zero in for y. So in this one, it would be four minus two times zero is that four. Well, two times zero is zero, and four minus zero is four. Substituting into this one, we have negative x, so negative 4 plus 0, does that equal negative 8? Well, negative 4 plus 0 is a negative 4, which is not equal to negative 8, so this is no. And last, graph the following systems of equations and state the solutions. Well, um, this is already graphed, okay? So we just need to state the solutions, and the solution is right here. Okay, that's not in the corner of uh, one of the boxes on this grid, so we're going to have to estimate. So if you get out your ruler and draw a line straight down through that point, so I'm going to use the line tool, and my board is not calibrated, so I will slide that over. It looks like it's intersecting the x-axis just after so right here, just after a half, so I'm going to say the x value looks to be about negative um, 0.75. Okay, and I'm going to say y looks to be, it's not as far to the y-axis, so I'm just going to sketch it over. It looks to be about 2.75. Okay, so when you can actually see where they intersect, you can... Um, estimate, but I'm going to show you a method on the calculator on our warm-up next class where I'll show you how to, on your calculator, find the decimal values for that point so you have an exact answer. So our solution is the point, so writing it as an x and y value as a coordinate be negative 0.75 comma 2.75 as our solution.